Thankfully, the debt ceiling nightmare appears to be over. Let's talk about what this means for you, as well as some other important low income news that we found this week. First of all, the debt deal does extend the work requirements for SNAP. Able-bodied adults without dependents will have to meet work requirements until age 54 under these new rules. This is a significant increase, but there are also some exceptions for homeless people or veterans who may struggle to comply with these new rules because of their circumstances. The new rules are temporary and will expire in 2030 unless they are extended. The deal also changes the way that states calculate cash assistance through TANF, although I wasn't able to get any clear details on how that calculation will change, so I'll have to follow up with you later. The plan also solidifies the end of the student loan payment freeze at the end of this summer. The Supreme Court is supposed to rule soon about whether or not the government can actually cancel student loan debt. In the meantime, anyone with outstanding student loans should prepare for those payments to start again by the fall. And on that note, a new study from the United States Department of Education has shown that around 40% of people who are eligible for income-driven repayment plans don't even know about them. If you or someone you know is struggling to repay student loans, you absolutely need to know about this. There are so many different programs that can help you, whether you're a student who borrowed, a parent or a grandparent who borrowed on behalf of a student. Our sponsors at CareConnect USA have a dedicated student loan relief helpline at 1-888-201-0431, and you can call them to discuss your, discuss your options. When you call that number, you will speak with an expert who can help you figure out if you're eligible for forgiveness, forbearance, deferrals, reductions, or even cancellations. My husband is a disabled veteran, so he was actually able to get all of his student loans forgiven through the government's disability program. Again, there are a lot of options out there, but you need to call 1-888-201-0431 to find out what options are available for you. In other news, the Supreme Court took up the case of a 94-year-old Minneapolis woman who lost her condo over a small unpaid tax bill. And this just infuriates me, guys. She owed $2,300 in unpaid taxes, which somehow piled up over $15,000 in interest. And to get their money, the government took her condo away and sold it for $40,000. And the county kept all of the money from the sale, even though it was way more than what she owed. This is a ridiculous policy, but it exists in a lot of different states. Alabama, Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Maine, Massachusetts, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, South Dakota, and Washington, D.C. all have similar rules. In fact, I read about a family that lost their home in Lincoln, Nebraska last January. The home was worth more than $250,000, but they lost it because they missed one tax payment in 2017. Even though they had continued paying taxes after that time, an investor was able to pay a one-time tax bill of $3,978 to claim the entire house. These policies are insane, and fortunately, the Supreme Court agrees. The court ruled in favor of the woman and said that the county could not keep all that extra money. Chief Justice Roberts wrote, the county had the power to sell Tyler's home to recover the unpaid property taxes, but it could not use the toehold of the tax debt to confiscate more property than was due. It's a small consolation for people who have already lost their homes, but at least this ruling will hopefully spark change and stop other people from suffering the same fate. In the meantime, if you have property taxes that you cannot pay, please contact your county assessor and ask about any property tax exemptions that are available. There are often exemptions and deferral programs for low-income seniors and veterans, as well as others, and it never hurts to ask. In some areas, you can even get a refund check for any taxes you've overpaid in the last several years. I've seen that happen twice in Washington State, and it can be life-changing. And as the Medicaid disenrollment progresses, KFF Health News has found that the majority of people who have lost their coverage were removed for not completing their paperwork. I know I've said this before, but please make sure the office knows how to reach you. And please make sure that you do the paperwork as soon as possible. Losing those benefits can be disastrous and it's very important to keep up on that. But also, it's important to make sure that you're not being scammed. On the flip side of this, North Carolina has been warning people who receive Medicaid or who have received Medicaid in the past um, because scammers are reaching out over phone calls, emails, and text messages saying that you need to send money or gift cards to keep your Medicaid coverage. That's not how it works. That is a scam. 
please do not fall for that. And with that, let's get into our local news. Um, today we're going to be talking about Arizona, Utah, California, Hawaii, Illinois, Louisiana, Maine, Massachusetts, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, North Dakota, and Ohio, um, as well as Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Washington, and Wisconsin. If your state isn't listed here and you decide to bounce off this video, make sure to go check out our recent video on how to get a free air conditioner, because um, that video may be able to help you as well. Now, in Arizona and Utah, the state Supreme Courts have approved a new program called Innovation for Justice. The program needed the approval of those state courts because it allows certain licensed advocates who work at community service centers to provide some limited legal advice without a law license. The program aims to help people who are facing eviction who cannot receive assistance from traditional legal services due to cost or availability. Um, so that's kind of cool. In California, applications are now open for a new low-income housing community in Hayward. There are 125 micro-studio apartments available at Depot Community Apartments. You can apply until June 19th. In order to be eligible, you must have a one- or two-person household with an income that is between 30 and 60 percent of the area median income. For Alameda County, that's between 30 and $62,000 for a single person or 35 to $71,000 for a couple. The apartments are only 300 square feet, but they do include shared laundry facilities, community rooms, outdoor rec spaces, a basketball court, picnic and barbecue areas, a dog park, and a community garden. You can apply online at housing.acgov.org, housing that's weird, or email depotcommunity at jsco.net for more information. Also in California, the Redwood Community Action Agency will hold a public hearing to discuss the needs of low-income hum Humboldt County residents. Your comments will be incorporated into the agency's plan for the next year. You can review their current plan at rcaa.org slash cap. The meeting will take place over Zoom between 6 and 8 p.m. on June 8th. So if you live in that area, I highly recommend that you attend. It's a good opportunity to have your voice heard. In Hawaii, applications for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program are now open. The application period will close on June 30th, so you need to apply right away. You can apply with your local community action program, and if you don't know which one is yours, you can find the right agency for your area at hawaiianelectric.com. In Illinois, Ameren and Lados are partnering up with Senior Services Plus to provide low-income seniors with free home improvements. The program can provide LED light bulbs, advanced power strips, faucet aerators, and other home energy improvements at no cost to you. For more details, please contact Ameren, Illinois. All right, in Louisiana, the second annual Super Senior Fest happened last week. The event offered free food boxes, health and fitness activities, and more. This is an annual event hosted by GenCare at Lafreniere Park. So please follow their organization so that you can be alerted before the next one happens. If you've been watching for a while, you know that these things are usually only advertised after the fact. And being only one person, I can't reliably follow every agency across the country that hosts these annual events. So when I find them, I tell you about them so that if you're local to that area, you can go follow the agency in charge and make sure that you don't miss next year's event because odds are I won't know about it until it's already happened again and then you'll miss out. So that's why I throw things in here even if it's a little bit late in the hope that you'll be able to participate next year if you missed it. Hopefully that makes sense. In Maine, the state has decided to advance a proposal that would get rid of a program that freezes property taxes for all people over the age of 65. And at first I didn't like this, but what they're going to do is instead they're going to expand two programs that specifically serve low-income seniors. The current freeze program only saves the average participant about $128, but it also benefits everybody no matter what their income level is. So the plan is to change that and only serve low-income seniors who qualify, and those low-income seniors will save up to about $500. The new bill has not been passed into law yet, but if you live in Maine, you may want to reach out to your local lawmakers and let them know how you feel about that, because it sounds like a solid change. In Massachusetts, applications are now open for Rise Up Cambridge. This program will provide $500 per month to low-income families with at least one child under the age of 21. The payments will last for 18 months. The city expects that 2,000 families will be eligible, but they were also kind of surprised when over 1,000 people applied on the first day, so it may end up covering more families than that. 
You must live in Cambridge and have an income that is at or below 250% of the federal poverty level to be eligible. You can apply at cambridgema.gov slash rise up. In Nevada, the Nevada Rural County's RSVP program will distribute $50 in SFMNP vouchers to low-income seniors in Carson City. You can pick them up between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. on June 9th in the front lobby of the Carson City Community Center. In order to be eligible, you must be a Nevada resident, age 60 or older, and meet income limits. Your income cannot exceed $2,248 per month if you're a single person or $3,041 per month if you're a couple. You need to bring a Nevada ID and sign the self-certification form at the site. You can have someone go on your behalf, but they'll need to bring your ID and whatnot and a form saying that they have permission. Um, you can contact the agency for that. But um, each household can receive one set of vouchers, and again, that's $50 for food, so that's great. In New Jersey, some lawmakers are pushing back against the new senior tax credit program called Stay NJ. This program is designed to help low-income seniors afford their homes by reducing property tax by up to 50%. The maximum credit, though, is given to people whose property taxes exceed $20,000 a year, and there are no income limits for the program as it is currently written. And because of that, some policy analysts are saying that the proposal actually benefits the wealthy more than low-income seniors. According to Peter Chen, the senior policy analyst at New Jersey Policy Perspective, quote, Making New Jersey more affordable for seniors is a noble goal, but we're not going to get there by giving the likes of Bruce Springsteen and Phil Murphy a $10,000 check. There are more effective and efficient ways to target relief to the seniors who are struggling the most with high housing costs, grocery bills, and prescription drug prices, end quote. So they're going to try to retool that, I think, into something that actually targets low-income seniors. In New York, one of the state's largest providers of housing, the mentally ill or formerly homeless people, has started hundreds of eviction cases. Breaking Ground has sued about 345 people since the end of the pandemic-era eviction moratorium. The New York Times reports that the agency is suing only to force the city to provide rental assistance faster. Very few of the cases actually lead to eviction, but it can still do lasting damage to the person who's been sued for this. If you live in New York City and you end up being sued for rent, please contact the city's Department of Social Services for assistance. Also in New York and possibly related, Westchester County is creating a new Office of Housing Council within their county's Department of Social Services. This agency will help provide legal services to tenants who are facing eviction. You must have an income that is at or below 300% of the federal poverty level in order to be eligible. The new agency can also assist if you get an unexpected rental increase or have other landlord-tenant issues. In North Dakota, a program called Food for the Summer helps provide food for children in low-income families. The program provides bags of groceries every Saturday at the Mesa Arena in Minot. The food bags include peanut butter, jam, apples, oranges, and ramen noodles. Um, let's see what else we got here. In Ohio, the organization called People Working Cooperatively has received extra funding for home repairs, home conservation, and disability modifications. They provide these services to residents of the greater Cincinnati area as well as the Butler County area. Please contact them if you need assistance with any of those. In Oklahoma, yes, we do have an update for Oklahoma today. The Oklahoma Homeowner Assistance Fund is still available. This fund can help you pay your mortgage, past due property taxes, homeowners insurance, or past due HOA dues. In order to be eligible, you must own a home in Oklahoma, live in that home, and be able to afford your home after receiving assistance. You must have an income that is at or below 150% of the area median income and meet other requirements. Get the details at ohfa.org slash HAF. <clears throat> In Pennsylvania, the state's farmer's market voucher program is experiencing delays. The Department of Agriculture has stated that they don't have enough paper to print all of the checks this month due to supply chain issues. The checks are expected to be sent in July instead. In Washington, the annual Seattle King County Clinic is back after a three-year hiatus. This event provides free dental, vision, and medical care to thousands of patients. Now, unfortunately, this is one of those things that isn't widely advertised until it's over. So it did happen in April, but I'm telling you now so that you can go follow Kieser Permanente's social media pages so that you will be notified before the next one happens. And again, that's often the only way to find out about things like this in advance. And I apologize that I didn't know about it beforehand. 
in Wisconsin, a new low-income housing project in Oshkosh is converting an old elementary school into a new low-income housing unit. The school has been renovated to include 31 low-income housing units. The development is called the Smith School Lofts. The process of renovating other buildings into housing is called adaptive reuse. And advocates say that it's the best way to solve the current affordable housing crisis. So it's really cool to see these buildings being changed over. That's all that I have for you today. Please don't forget to go check out our latest video on how you can get